for when you are. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, my name is Tyler Axelson, and I serve on the nominating committee on the Student Assembly Board of Directors with Ty and Zofia. Um, great group to work with. Uh, the, tonight, we have our candidates for both the president and director position for the Student Assembly Board of Directors. Um, we're going to get to know them, ask, ask them a couple questions, and yeah, we're going to get started. We're going to start with Kaylee Bates, who's running for president. Our question is, um, so our question is, so please introduce yourself, uh, the year and position you're running for, some previous leadership experience, why you're running for this position, and a fun question, oh, what did you want to be when you were six years old? We'll start with Kaylee. My name's Kaylee Bates. Can you all hear me? Okay, great. I just wanted to make sure because I'm in my car because I just got off of my clinical rotation. Um, so I am a third year physical therapy student. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I am at a clinical rotation right now. I graduate June of 23. Um, other leadership positions that I've held when I was in my undergrad um, career, like finishing my undergrad, I actually held, held many positions in our student organization within um, what was called Associated Students Incorporated at the university. And the notable ones was I was a director on a board of directors. Um, and then I was also chair of the board of directors my following year. And then when I was chair, I was also a part of another association that was a part of a statewide association in the state of California, where I was on multiple uh, other committees and uh, notable ones where I was the vice uh, president of finance. Um, and I could talk about more leadership experiences that I've had in the past, but I kind of want to roll into why I want to be the president right now. Um, and it's something that I've currently as a student delegate, I have seen not only what this board has done this last year, but where it is going in the future. And I'm really excited to see that regardless of me being a part of the board or not. Um, but I was excited to be able to apply for the opportunity to be the president, to talk th through and to other people within the association about what's going on with students as when I was the chair of the board of directors at the state university, I actually met monthly with our university president and our vice president of student affairs. So I feel very comfortable and versed to talk with and about student issues and find real solutions that we can make actionable items to be able to move forward. Um, so that's a little bit about me. A uh, fun thing, what I wanted to be when I was six was actually a pediatrician, so not too far off. Um, I am, I don't know if I wanna work with peds or not right now, but that's a little bit more about me. Thank you so much, Kaylee. All right, next up, also for president, we have Julia Black. Hi everyone, my name is Julia. I'm a third year currently at Briarcliff University in Iowa, and there's a lots of cornfields around there. I'm originally from the cities in Minnesota. Um, I'm running for president of the student board for previous leadership experience, um, aside from being on our student board and having lots of other presidential candidate like experience. Um, I'm super passionate about pro bono clinics, and that's something that I really, truly am passionate about. And um, I had, founded the North Central Region Consortium for pro bono clinics for physical therapists, uh, clinics to gain appropriate access to um, specifically foreign language. So I've lived in Chile and Spain. I know I have blonde hair, but I can speak Spanish. <laughs> um, and that's just been a really cool experience that has really allowed me to see the inner workings of the skills be president because I was basically doing what I would be doing for APTA, but for pro bono network communicating with the national levels um, and being in charge of all the different regions and pro bono clinics in our region and just making sure that we have appropriate access to clinics. So that has been a huge, huge part of the reason why um, I was told by many people that I should go for this. And I think that my main goal as president is really just to amplify the voices of our students as so someone who has worked with uh, lots of patients who can't or don't have voices because of language barriers or for whatever reason that is, 
Um, it's really important to me to make sure that each and every person, each and every patient, each and every client um, has a voice and is heard. Um, I would say my, I asked my mom what I wanted to be when I was six because I wasn't actually quite sure. And she said that I would go run around and tell everyone, can I do this? Can I do this? Can I plan your wedding? Can I officiate your wedding <laughs> or something? So I guess I wanted to be a coordinator or planner, which has translated into PT school too. Um, I'm in charge of all of our special events. And I did that in high school too, just planning really fun things. And so I think that's also something that I would love to bring to APTA, especially with all the planning skills that I have. And I'm not social at all, clearly. So <laughs> I think it would also be awesome just to encourage that engagement and uh, just be a kind and confident voice for our organization. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. And we have Ricky up next. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Ricky Lochi. I'm a second year at Northwestern University. Uh, running for president. Um, I guess, you know, I'm a little bit older. I'm actually like a, I'm like um, a little bit older than most students. So I will kind of stick to some of the leadership experiences that um, I feel have benefited me um, recently. Um, <clears throat> the first one is that I'm also a student of public health. I'm getting a dual degree and we're currently working on a project to um, help um, bring uh, physical therapy into community health centers. Um, and I'm working with a great team of students and uh, faculty at Northwestern to be able to provide access into uh, FQHCs. Um, and we're looking at um, what protocols and how to do that. And uh, we're looking at some interventions that we can do, which is pretty cool. Um, I also am part of our diversity, equity, inclusion committee, specifically our outreach committee that does a lot of outreach um, with current students to um, high schoolers and middle schoolers um, about physical therapy and um, how we can reach uh, students early on and get them engaged. And then um, the last part is that's kind of unique is that I run my own business. Um, I have a business with um, three employees um, that um, I run, you know, um, everything from coaching them um, to finances. Um, and it's um, kind of running my own little organization. Um, so that's something that gives me a lot of fulfillment. And uh, I've been able to develop and create on my own. Um, why I'm running for this position. Um, I'm running for this position because um, I was really inspired by my classmates. Um, my classmates are these incredibly hardworking, quirky, um, you know, ambitious people um, that, um, like a lot of us, struggle with things like stress management and struggle with being overly ambitious and being perfectionists and um, wanting to do their very best. And I want to support them. And I want them to feel like they have access to support networks and to resources that will help them on this journey. And I want to protect them um, because grad school is not always easy. Conversations about diversity, equity, inclusion, you know, psychosocial, those things are not always easy for students to manage. And I want to make sure that they have the resources to not only take care of themselves in grad school, but to excel beyond grad school because um, they're pretty, they're pretty awesome people. Um, and what did I want to be when I was uh, six years old? Um, I wanted to be an astronaut because my father worked at NASA and he would always bring us space ice cream home. And I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. Yes, thank you, Ricky. I want to try space ice cream now. I never knew I wanted to try that, but now I do. <laughs> Wait, what is that? Can you explain what space ice cream is? like freeze-dried ice cream. It's not as good as it sounds, but at the time, you know, as a kid, you were just fascinated with it. And that's awesome. Anything with space in front of it, that's that's awesome. Thank you for sharing. That was great. All right, and that, last but not least for president, we have Shane. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Shane Matthew. Uh, I'm a third year PT student at the University of Florida. Uh, I'm currently actually reporting from Nashville, Tennessee for my clinical rotation. Um, I wish I could be in Florida to be with my uh, people, they're uh, currently about to weather a tropical storm, uh, but one thing we should all know about Florida is that we're a tough bunch. Um, uh, so speaking to my leadership experience, I want to uh, go a little bit more recent. Um, I recently had the honor of being uh, my school's uh, administrative director for our pro bono equal access physical therapy clinic. Uh, when I took on the position, uh, it was as a first year, um, and one of the main positions uh, was for the administrative director to be able to bring back our clinic to in-person services following COVID. 
Um, I was able to incorporate that into my uh, my strategic vision for the clinic. Uh, we were successful going into my second year. Um, following that project, uh, I was able to be a consultant for other schools in the Florida region to either bring back their clinics uh, following COVID or establish pro bono clinics uh, across the state of Florida. Um, I was able to use that experience to also be uh, on the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine, uh, not only as a PT student, but a representative from my school, uh, my program, uh, and the PT profession. Uh, in that role, I was able to uh, create a decision-making tree that incorporated students into the healthcare learning space, especially during times of the crises. Um, prior to that, uh, going back to undergrad, I was a very active member of my school's uh, multicultural fraternity. Uh, it was called Sigma Beta Rho. Uh, I started as a freshman being the chapter secretary, uh, moving my way up to chapter president. Uh, then I realized I wanted to work on a more regional level to help our students uh, across the state of Florida uh, as new member educator uh, coordinator. Um, more recently, I've been able to work uh, as a member of the National Judicial Board for the organization uh, and part of the National Expansion Committee uh, to meet with different schools. So I bring a little bit of experience uh, working with different programs on the administrator side, uh, also with students. Um, I am running for this position uh, primarily because of two precipitating events. Uh, one of them was being a TA uh, in my program. Uh, for several classes and I realized how much I appreciated working with students um, from all over. Um, I realized that that's something I don't want to end after school is over and it's something that I'm looking for as I currently apply for residency. Uh, the second thing is uh, not so pleasant. Uh, going into PT school I realized being one of two South Asian students in my program uh, how often both faculty and students mixed us up. Um, it was, it was kind of painful in the beginning, you know, you go into PT school knowing how hard you work to be there only to be mistaken for someone else, or almost like you're being devalued for what you bring to the table. Um, and I failed many times in terms of speaking for myself, speaking for my classmates that were also going through the same kind of thing. Uh, over time, I was able to kind of find my voice. Um, and bring to light how much, uh, how important that was for me to be seen, heard, and respected. Uh, then I start, started thinking to myself, I wonder how many students across the country feel the same way. And so that's why I'm here. Uh, I'm here to protect, preserve, and promote the interests of our student body. Um, and I want to carry that torch forward, uh, especially on a national level, to make sure that not only the students around me, uh, not only on a local level, uh, not only through my school, but also on the national level. Uh, finally, when I was six years old, uh, I wanted to be a sound engineer. Um, my dad uh, used to be a sound engineer on the weekends. Uh, he used to tour around the world uh, for a Indian uh, singer. Um, and then on the weekends, sometimes he'd take me. So I grew up like next to the stage uh, watching him on the soundboard. Um, and I love music. Um, it's something that I probably do in my uh, free time in the future. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you, Shane. And that was our four president uh, candidates this year. Thank you all for sharing and uh, letting us get to know you all. Now, next, we're moving on to director. So to get started with our director position, we'll go with Danielle. Hi, everyone. My name is Danielle Audain. I'm a current second year student at Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia. I will start with what I wanted to be when I was six years old. I really like being like teaching, I thought that would be like a really cool profession to be in. And then when I got older, I realized that they're undervalued in our society. And I definitely wanted to be able to have a profession that was going to be able to help me sustain the lifestyle that I wanted. So it's probably why I decided not to be going into teaching. But I think in PT, we can definitely implement teaching. So I think I'll find my niche there and use that. But um, my previous leadership experience, I currently help out with APTA Georgia's PT Day at the Capitol Committee. I also help out with APTA North Carolina's DEI Committee, and I'm a board member of the National Association of Black Physical Therapy, or known as NABPT. And so I think those areas of my leadership experience help me to kind of hone in on the passions that I really want to focus on in the future as a practicing PT, which is DEI and representation and then also advocacy. So I definitely think that 
the reason that I'm running for the position of being a director is one, I'm really passionate about helping students find their why, helping students realize the importance of becoming involved early. The membership retention for students is going to help us to have great future leaders in the in the um in the spotlight in the future. Like our leadership on the APTA student board will eventually transition into us helping out in major ways as we are practicing clinicians to advocate for the various areas that we practice in. And then also I think of course that I constantly push myself to reach new opportunities. And I think working with a great group of people will help me to one, become a better um, clinician and then also just a better individual and learn from you all and what you guys bring to the table. So thank you. Thank you so much. Are we at, next we have up Corey. Um, hey everyone, I'm a second year student physical therapist from Sacred Heart University in Connecticut. Um, I'll start off with um, what I wanted to be when I was um, six years old. Um, I wanted to be a firefighter. Um, my uncle was a firefighter um, and he would always tell me like all the cool stories about it and how he worked um, as a team with everybody. And I, don't know, I thought that was just pretty interesting. I don't really know any rhyme or reason for it. I'm not interested in it now, um, but yeah. Um, some things about me uh, for why I'm qualified. Um, during my undergraduate career at Sacred Heart University, I was a senator, so I sat on a board similar to kind of what the directors do, um, and we worked as a team. Um, there were four of us, and we took the students' concerns from my entire grade, um, about 2,000 students, and we kind of brought that to the higher administration. So, um, you know, having those teamwork and leadership skills there. And then in PT school, I'm one of the curriculum reps, so I meet with the faculty every semester and bring what went well, what didn't, went, didn't go so well. Um, to them, kind of being the voice for the students there. Um, I'm one, I sit on the board of the Connecticut Student Special Interest Group. Um, so working with the team there as well, kind of you know connecting all those students across Connecticut together um, and promoting and, and um, kind of hosting awesome opportunities for them. Um, and then that's pretty much it. Hoping to kind of push the push that experience forward onto the national board and you know kind of expose students from all walks of life. Um, to kind of cool opportunities that are out there because there's so much that people don't realize that are out there and, you know, just pushing that forward and, you know, getting everybody involved. That's it. Awesome. Thank you. Corey, I also want to be a firefighter when I was six. So same boat is there as you. All right. Next up, we have Hannah. Hi, my name is Hannah Lockup. I'm a third year physical therapy student with Emory and Henry College. I'm currently out on rotation right now in Winchester, Virginia and I'm running for the position of director. So I've been in a lot of leadership, leadership roles dating back to high school, but as of more recently, I was a student representative um, for the Virginia's APTA strategic planning meeting in 2022. I was the Virginia APTA student state director and I work with APT liaisons across my state. Um, I recently was a speaker for the Virginia APTA fall summit that was held just last weekend. Um, I worked with my local board director to host an APTA lunch and learn at my school. So I've kind of done things on a grassroots level as well as on a um, state level. I volunteer my time at the Mel Lehman Free Clinic that um, my school works in conjunction with to provide free physical therapy services. And then I've also traveled with the National, um, with the North Carolina Chiropractic Board of Medicine and was helped to lobby in DC. I know I helped advocate for a different um, profession, but it's all the same, right? We're all trying to work towards bettering the professions and for the benefit of society. So the reason why I'm running um, mainly is because I really want to be surrounded by like-minded people, just of you guys who inspire me with your activism, people who I can learn from and work along beside to not only further benefit myself, but my fellow students and just the profession as a whole. I had a program head that I started in school with who has since retired and she was so passionate and so involved in the APTA. But since she retired, I can really see that the passion has kind of left the school. Um, and she taught professional issues at my school and she just really inspired me so much so that I would love to be an adjunct professor who works in tandem with another school and my um, to teach professional issues. And my big focal point would be the APTA just because it's kind of like the heart of our profession. It's just the big national body organization that helps advocate for us on so many different levels. And you can get involved with in so many different avenues, whether it be legislation, activism, or just kind of being a local member. 
And then when I was six, um, I know it sounds really cheesy, but I wanted to be like my dad. So my dad is a healthcare administrator and I just really want to slowly follow in his footsteps. And I think this is one great way to do that. That was awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, next up, we have Ethan. Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Ethan Mitchell, and I'm a third year student physical therapist at Angelo State University. And I am running for the director position. So some of my previous leadership, one of the things that really gave me some confidence in life, you know, in undergrad, I didn't have a whole lot of confidence, but joining the pre-PT club is really where I feel like I just found my zone and my flow in that community. And I was eventually elected to be the president of the Texas Tech Pre-PT Club. And that was a really great experience for me to be a leader and be accountable to a large group of people. And for me, that was inspiring and it drives me to seek more leadership roles. I also was the Texas Corps Ambassador um, my first year. And that involved a lot of doing like Zoom meetings. We do speak with pre-physical therapy clubs and we would do service projects, getting PT students across Texas to write thank you notes for healthcare workers and really just presenting to students around the state of Texas, the value of physical therapy and uh, letting them know what's going on through uh, monthly emails is a big thing that that was for. And why I want to run for director of APTA, I would say it really just gives me a great opportunity to serve my peers and the profession as a whole. That's something that excites me and it, it gives me purpose and it allows me to really push myself to be the best I can be. And the other reason that I want to run is just because I was inspired by different APTA leaders like Sharon Dunn, listening to podcasts about how much passion she has for this profession and for the younger generation being the ignition for change of the future. And it's like, someone's got to do, someone's got to step up and fill in a role for advocating for this profession and making us a more valuable profession. And I feel like I could be a great asset in that. I think all of us could be, I think everyone on this Zoom chat is highly qualified and will do a great job, whoever is elected. And to finish off, what did I wanna be when I was six years old? So, yeah, not really connection a whole lot with physical therapy, but I wanted to be a geologist. As a kid, you just get interested in like such random things like rocks. <laughs> I don't know. Rocks are super interesting to me. I guess it was just like going out in my backyard and I was curious to flip over if, what, was, what was under this rock, you know? So, but that was me when I was six. Thanks for listening, y'all. Thank you so much, Ethan. All right, next we have up is Jackie. Okay, hi everyone. Um, my name's Jackie. I'm a third year physical therapy student at Sacred Heart University, and I'm running for the director position as well. So some leadership that I've been involved in, especially throughout graduate school, is I'm currently the president of my class. Um, and with that position, it's a lot of delegation between other positions that are on the board because we have a lot of different committees that are on the board. So I really enjoyed that. But then also coordinating events for my class and the classes below us and also helping out um, with PT Day of Service and different fundraising for our class so we can have different events. So that's been really cool experience. And even though I was the president, it felt like my board just worked very well together and we all kind of shared the role. So it was really cool to have an awesome board. And I definitely feel like with all the candidates that are running, we're, whoever gets elected is going to do similar things, which is great to hear. 
Um, I also was a GSAC rep or at our school, it's called Graduate Student Advisory Committee. And with that, I met with all different grad students um, at Sacred Heart and we kind of helped coordinate events for graduate students, figured out what graduate students needed in terms of mental health, um, different avenues, getting funded for different things such as CSM for PT students or other conferences for other students, which was really cool to be a part of. Um, I was also an admissions ambassador for my program. So I kind of helped with recruiting for students to come to Sacred Heart for PT school, and then also giving them tours, talking to families. So that was really cool. Um, and then also last year, I was actually a candidate for the student board of directors. So even though I didn't win a position, it was a very great experience. It taught me a lot about the importance of advocacy and how involvement is so important for our field and why we kind of all need to stick together. So like I said, even though I wasn't granted a position, I built so many connections through it. And it was really cool to see the connections grow, even though I wasn't particularly a part of it. And the reason I'm running for the position is mainly advocacy. Um, I think it's huge in our profession, especially between PT and PTA students. There's so much changing in our in our field that I feel like the more involvement we have, the more voices that are going to be heard, the better our profession is going to build. And I think that's so important right now. Um, also, one of my mentors throughout PT school is very involved in the APTA, and he's kind of inspired me to continue with my passion throughout the PT realm and PT field and helping out with different things. And then also after seeing what the board accomplished last year, it kind of inspired me more to apply again this year. Um, and luckily I was granted to be a candidate for another year. So after seeing all of that, it was really inspiring and I really wanted to be part of it. So, um, so yeah, and what I wanted to be when I was six years old, this is kind of crazy. So I didn't want to be a PT because my mom is a PT and I wanted to be a teacher, but we kind of see how that worked out. So. Your mom's always right, everyone. <laughs> very, very true. Thank you so much. All right, next up we have Brooke. Hello, everyone. I'm Brooke. I'm a third year DPT student at the University of Pittsburgh. I am also on one of my terminal clinical rotations right now. Um, so very exciting stuff. Um, in terms of leadership experience, honestly, most of mine has been throughout PT school because I feel like that's really when I gained the confidence to take on more leadership positions. Um, so in terms of APTA involvement, I am the APTA PA class representative for my cohort. Um, and I also used to be part of the APTA advocacy project committee. And that was what first kind of introduced me to the APTA. That's where I first connected with previous board members. Um, and this helped me to understand one, the inner workings of advocacy within the professional organization, but also how I could get involved with this as a student and how I could encourage others to become involved as well. So I ran a national advocacy dinner for Pennsylvania um, with our core ambassador. Um, as the class rep for my cohort, I basically encouraged student involvement. I helped to fundraise $5,500 for CSM last year and I got 15 of us to go and that was a really awesome experience. Um, in addition to that, I'm also very passionate about pro bono work, like a lot of others have already talked about, um, and addressing social determinants of health, um, healthcare disparities, all of that is super important to me, also as a first-gen low-income college student, so something I'm very passionate about. So I've had the opportunity to work at the free clinic within the Southside neighborhood of Pittsburgh, which is interdisciplinary with med students, OT students. Um, and I did that on a weekly basis and also presented at the 2022 Pro Bono Network Conference, which was really awesome. Got to meet a lot of students that are all passionate about that work and it was really incredible. And then in addition to that, I love, well, one, I love engaging with students and I love teaching. So I've been a TA for three different classes since I've been in PT school. Right now I'm the lead TA for anatomy for the first year DPT students. So I get to connect with all of them, help mentor them as they go through this transition, which has been amazing. 
And additionally, I've been involved with prospective student outreach for students that have been accepted to Pitt and, you know, get to let them know about the program and what they're getting into. Um, in terms of why I'm running for um, this position, like I said before, I love engaging with students. Um, and I think making sure everyone has, one has a seat at the table that we're amplifying everyone's voices. There's so many physical therapy students that aren't members and there's many reasons that they're not. One of them might be financial barriers. They might not know what the APTA is. They haven't really found their voice yet. And I wanna be able to one, help get everyone's voices amplified. And I also want to make tangible change I consider myself to be someone who's a go-getter, so I really want to help. I think there's, especially within our generation, there's so many people that have won so much passion to elevate a profession forward, and I think we need people that are ready to step up and, you know, make sure everyone's voices are heard, and also can think critically about what we're doing right now and what we need to change so we can continue to elevate our profession. And then when I was six years old, um, I wanted to be a performer fully. I really wanted to be a singer to be specific. Um, fun fact, I love music um, and that's a passion of mine. I think in a way like graduate school, I get, I forget about sometimes, but um, music is a big part of my life. And if you would have asked me 20 years ago, I would have been singing on stage. So I used to perform to my family a lot. I have some great home videos, but that's me. Awesome, thank you so much. All right, next up we have Carolina. Hi everyone, I'm Carolina. I'm a second year DPT student at the University of Pittsburgh. Um, so to start off with some leadership, I am also my class's APTA PA representative, um, where with part of that role, I kind of just send out a weekly email with all of the APTA and APTA opportunities. And as of recently with our program's um, introduction of the hybrid program, I've been starting to help the hybrid students from all over the country get in contact with their state chapter so they can also get involved. Um, I'm also president of our student-led DEI and PT group where I lead bi-weekly meetings and we talk about a different aspect of DEI may sometimes within the profession, sometimes not, sometimes related to current events um, because DEI is just such an important part of the field and also understanding our patients. Um, within this group, I also started um, a group uh, where we practice Spanish, but in the context of physical therapy, um, as a native Spanish speaker who moved here from Puerto Rico with my parents, I really saw the struggle that they went through learning English and also other friends as well with their parents. So I'm really passionate about the language barrier and actually um, became a medical interpreter myself over COVID because I had nothing else to do because no one was working and things weren't happening. Um, but I am also a student board observer for the APTPA, uh, APTA PA House of Delegates, which really allowed me to understand advocacy, how the House of Delegates works and how important it is to our profession. Uh, so I was able to follow APTA PA from January th through August and just see how all of the motions were able to change and how all of the different state chapters work together to essentially come to a good end product and that they vote on in the end. Within this position, I was also chosen to represent Pennsylvania at the Leadership Congress in DC, which really allowed me to learn more about the APTA and leadership, but also meet and network with other students from all over the country that had similar interests. I'm also a SPT volunteer at our uh, free clinic in Southside Pittsburgh to provide PT services, which is also really cool because I get to work with a lot of limited English proficient patients on a weekly basis. And most recently, which I'm really excited about, I am now a physical therapy mentor for Pitt's undergrad women in healthcare club. Um, we haven't completely started yet. We just got assigned our mentees, but I'm really excited to help future students get involved in the profession. Um, so I am running for the student board because the student board's goal is to increase overall student engagement. And that's my goal too. I know that we're all super busy students and it can be really overwhelming to figure out where to even get started when it comes to getting involved in an organization as big as the APTA. And I really wanna encourage other students to get engaged while prioritizing the idea that you don't need to devote 100% of yourself because we're so busy. 
It can sound daunting and overwhelming, but rather students can engage their time as their needs allow. It's all about the quality of their experiences, not necessarily the quantity. And like I keep saying, we're really busy and it also doesn't help that some programs are getting shorter and shorter. I really wanna prioritize engaging students earlier in that, their academic career so that they can take full advantage of their time as students and as APTA members to the resources that are available to them to just improve and um, facilitate their education. And lastly, with DPT and PTA programs in almost every state, especially with the new hybrid options that lots of programs offer, we're everywhere and we have a lot to learn from each other. I think that social media is a wonderful tool to stay connected with everyone and even make new connections while promoting a network and sense of community within the students of the APTA. And last, when I was six years old, I was obsessed with spy kids. So I wanted to be a spy, but specifically, I wanted to be Carmen Cortez because I'm a big sister and she's the big sister and Junie was, he was a mess. So I wanted to be a spy, but like more like Carmen Cortez. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Carmen Cortez was the goat. That's a great, great film. All right, last but not least, we have Delena. Hey everyone, nice to meet you. My name is Delena. That's Dylan with an uh, and I'm a third year student at Mayo Clinic, and I'm excited to be slated for the director position on the board. Um, I've had experience in a variety of leadership positions, including the president of my class, which I took on because we all worked so hard to get into PT school. But now that we had got there, I really wanted to foster an environment of collaboration as opposed to competitiveness. I also really enjoyed being the voice for the students to our faculty, um, which was also a really good learning experience and communication and finding the middle ground between different ideas. Last year, I served as the APTA Minnesota Student Special Interest Group Diversity, Equity, Inclusion and Action Chair, which really increased my awareness of a lack of diversity within our profession and I realized that underrepresented populations in our profession often don't even know that PT is an option. So I have and will continue to host educational sessions about our profession to middle and high schoolers. And I recently actually hosted an event for 10th through 12th graders. And I just really had a good time seeing their faces light up when they got to interact and do things that physical therapists do and see that our profession really is a great option for their careers. And I also currently serve as the co-chair for the APTA Minnesota Student Special Interest Group, where I've had the opportunity to empower other students to get involved with their own chapters to make change. And working with other motivated students has really connected me more with my profession and, and really given me a sense of appreciation for not just the profession overall, but the people who work in it. So I'm really running in order to give back to the students what I've gained from the APTA, because through the SIG, through the APTA, I've really been able to see the positive impact that students can have on our profession, but I've also met some of the coolest people that I've met in my entire life through the APTA. And I really want to give that same passion and give those same opportunities to meet all of these people who have these passions um, to all students across the nation. I feel like I personally have become a better student, a better clinician, and a better leader through engaging with the APTA, and I want to afford that same opportunity to other people. And then for that final question, when I was six years old, just like Ricky, actually, I wanted to be an astronaut. I was absolutely fascinated with space and I would watch every single documentary that I could. I'm still super fascinated uh, with black holes and I always love learning every new detail. I think even just last night, we had a really cool solar eclipse. So I am really into space, but I ended up falling in love with PT even harder. So that's why I'm here. And thank you for listening, everyone. Thank you so much. And we actually have one more uh, candidate for director. 
I'm Sienna. Sorry about that. No worries. Hello, I'm Sienna Leary. I'm a third year at Ithaca College in Ithaca, New York. So over the past couple of years, I've had amazing opportunities to be in different leadership positions. One of them being I was the class rep for our student association for two years. And then for the past three and a half years now, which is crazy, I've been the anatomy and physiology teaching assistant for our undergrad students because this is a six year program. So it's three and three years. And then for the past year and a half, I've been the secretary of our student org for PT students of color, which has been amazing and probably one of the biggest reasons why I'm here today. And then through that organization, I've been able to co-lead a program, a mentorship program for high school students and middle school students that are underrepresented and teach them about different healthcare professions, not just about PT. And then outside of the PT program, I have been able to co-lead programs with recreational therapists for individuals with special needs, which has been amazing. And then as for why I'm leading, I had the opportunity to go to CSM last year, which was amazing. And it opened my eyes to exactly what the board does. And I was inspired by all the empowerment and the advocacy, and I wanted to be more a part of it. And I felt like with all the different positions that I've held over the years that I can bring that same passion and advocacy. And I've had a variety of different leadership positions in different areas. So bring those new ideas and learn from you all because you all have amazing experiences and collaborate and reach out to the students and get them more involved and heard. And as for what I wanted to be when I was six, like Brooke, but not likely because I can't sing. I wanted to be a singer. My dad broke that down to me real quick that I probably won't go very far. But it was all up. That's awesome. Thank you so much. All right, and that was all of our candidates for director. <clears throat> so now we're going to ask each of our candidates one last question, and we're going to start back at the top with president. So our last question for this evening is, uh, how do you plan to develop relationships with SPTs and SPTAs to expand their student experience? And again, we're going to start right back at the top with our four candidates for president. We'll get started with Kaylee. Hey, everyone. Um, so that's a great question. In general, I think it's really important to for all of us to know that we're all learning and especially moving forward in our profession, it's so important to have interprofessional collaboration. And that's something that my current clinical rotation is very good about talking with not only PTAs, but other providers within the clinic. So that's one really exciting thing that I get to see firsthand. And that's something that I wanna to continue to bring into our profession. I do feel like our board this past year has laid a really good foundation for that collaboration of SPTs and SPTAs. I wanna continue that moving forward. And I think that it's important for us to have, mm, sorry, I, my brain jumped to the next thought, so reeling it back in. Um, I think it's important for us to have multiple levels of ways for people to have involvements. And for us all, we're very engaged. We have the time, we make the time, but for people who have other priorities, whether or not their plate is so full or not, I think it's very important for us to have small engagement opportunities for them, for them to feel heard, for them to have the space because other people have family obligations, other people are more interested in, say in research or more interested because they just don't have necessarily the space on their schedule. So I think that it's important for us to recognize that we are students and we also have these other things um, and allowing them to have multiple different types of engagement opportunities as well as for the people who want that more dialogue for us to be able to have that to collaborate and to, to continue to move forward. Um, and so those are my thoughts. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. And we now, next we have Julia. Hi, everyone. Um, I feel like for me, the state and local conferences like CSM are one of the most important ways to build on that student relationships and engagement. Um, even at CSM, just meeting people like 
Carolina and everyone. Like it was really fun. <laughs> it's just really fun to be able to do that. And um, for state conferences, I know that we at APT Iowa have been doing student conclaves at conferences that many students are already going to um, and doing things like top golf and things outside of the clinic where you really get to connect with those students. And also at those conferences, there are DPTs and PTAs, and I think it really helps with that transition of what does my life look like after graduation and having those mentors and connections that just continues that student engagement. Um, but for sure, CSM was huge for me, like you guys all have said, like the breakfast and top golf and all of that was so much fun and I really want other students to be able to experience those amazing and outstanding um, things that we can do and just all the lifelong benefits that come from it. Um, I know even in March, one of the students that I had met at CSM told their director about some of the things that I was doing with pro bono clinics and they flew me out to Philly and I got to speak at the pro bono conference like Brooke was saying to be a guest speaker at that it was so cool and I really just hope that every single student can feel that same wow I have great connections wow I feel like I'm passionate about what I do and I know where I'm going to go and how I'm going to do that but overall just um, I think really just coordinating the actions of the student board too as well and leading a great team because it's not just about being president or just about being vice president. It's about a collaboration, like a lot of other people have said, of the student board and just being an unbiased, kind voice to be there to support an outstanding team. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Julia. Next up, we have Ricky. Um, so I think it starts with um, something that we do a lot with like public health, which is assessment right? Understanding why students don't necessarily always feel engaged, understanding what are their perspectives, listening to them, and understanding what they want. And from there, you can create new plans, right? And the other thing is access. Right now, um, it's hard to access what the student board of director does. It's hard to access resources for students. You can't go to the APTA website and, you know, see what we're doing and see the opportunities and why is there not a student section? Why aren't we engaging them early on social media? Uh, there is a reason Barack Obama is on TikTok now. Um, we have all these opportunities to engage students in unconventional ways and get them interested and pique their interests. From there, what we need to do is provide for the students, provide them based on what their needs and what their wants are and how we can actually reach them. Um, we need to protect them in the classroom. We need to protect them in clinical experiences. We need to give opportunities for mentorship and professionalism and networking um, as much as possible. When we provide with them and we engage with them and we ask them what they need, then they become engaged members. And when they become engaged members, they can really understand exactly what APTA is about, all the benefits, and then they can become engaged members after they graduate, and then they can move forward legislation, move the profession like forward, and we can inspire them. You know, I often hear that physical therapy is a luxury, um, or that's how people see our profession. We are not a luxury. And students need to understand that from the get-go. They need to understand that we have a lot of power in healthcare. They have a lot of um, access that we can do and a lot of you know, unconventional things um, that we are still looking into. And I really want to inspire students early on by getting them engaged early on and providing for them. Awesome, thank you. And uh, last but not least for our presence, we have Shane. All right, thank you. Um, I think that uh, the most important thing uh, is to make sure that our students feel heard um, in these kinds of things. Uh, in order to create change, we need to engage. Um, I think that uh, I have been able to tap into two of my uh, Clifton Strengths Finder, finder uh, traits. Uh, for those of you who don't know uh, what that is, it's basically like the professional zodiac signs. Um, but uh, for me, my two biggest strengths that I feel I have are connectedness and strategy. Um, so piggybacking uh, on what the other presidential candidates were saying, uh, I think that engagement starts with understanding what students need, uh, what they feel like they're lacking. Uh, when I was the first year student, uh, I didn't know what, what the APTA could provide. Um, 
I didn't know that there was a student board that existed. Um, what was required of us at the time was to sign up to be APTA members so that we could access the online training modules uh, for students in order to, to get through a professional issues class. Uh, but I think that students need to know that they have and they they have they can access and they, they also deserve a seat at the table for making decisions for them. Um, for for me, uh, running for president, uh, I want to hear them. Uh, I want to meet with leaders across the country. I want to meet with representatives rep representatives from each school. Um, I think systematically going across and finding out where uh, what areas are not being accessed what resources students need uh, is critically important. Um, something as simple as a survey before meeting with uh, individuals from different schools to find out a little bit more about what they feel like they're lacking, what resources they feel like they're, they need, what their school needs. Um, and then going into that, uh, that second part about strategy, how can we strategize uh, to improve that access? How can we strategize to uh, allow students to, to gain more representation uh, in our organization? Um, and using those skills and those uh, opportunities to, to kind of uplift students. And in doing so, we uplift our profession, uh, which is extremely important. Awesome. Thank you, Shane. And those that was from our president candidates. Now we're going to move on to director and we'll start with Danielle. All right. So just to be brief, I'm um, thinking about the ways that I I plan to build relationships with student physical therapists and student physical therapy assistant students. One of the ways I really think that that could work is using and leveraging um, social media, like our uh, peers have already stated in the presidential candidates. But I definitely think that it's awesome that we have an APTA app. I think a lot of people don't even know about that. And I think that could be a great starting point to be able to create more engagement, and um, just advertise like the things that we have going on. I think the hub is also something that a lot of students don't know about the APTA hub. And um, I think if we could kind of create a way to combine the two and make them more interactive and accessible to students to have like a soundboard opportunity for students to express their needs and concerns directly to the student board or just even clinicians out in the field practicing right now, that that would be a great opportunity to hear from them. I also think that the directors and um, everyone on the student board would obviously benefit from having regional check-ins in a way, kind of like what the vice president does with the core ambassadors, just to hear from students if we wanted to set up opportunities to kind of have like a town hall that would be with different programs in different areas, but also collect an opportunity to really advertise that things that different students are doing and spotlight to one another, like, hey, this is a great idea. Just because someone's already doing it in Florida doesn't mean it can't be done in California or Massachusetts or Atlanta. And I think that working together to really just show that the things that we are doing well and that we can amplify them can be a great way to push everything forward and create momentum for change. Thank you. Thank you so much. And next up, we have Corey. Um, you know, I think we're at a unique kind of like time period, you know, everybody was kind of locked away with, with COVID-19 and, you know, people are eager, people are eager and want to, you know, kind of connect and, and network with other students across the country. Um, and I think that this is, this is like the time to do so. Um, you know, COVID has allowed technology to kind of advance with the way we can kind of connect with one another. Um, so I think, you know, utilizing the connect, um, the technology that has been developed, you know, using social media, all that good stuff. Um, to kind of host online events that allow students from all walks of life um, to kind of connect with one another. Um, and then, you know, now this is the opportunity for people to get out there. You know, a big thing with, I know a lot of my students um, at my school is like the finances, you know, you're paying for PT school. So it's hard to get to those big national and, region, and national events like CSM, you know, um, a lot of people do have that wonderful opportunity. And I had that wonderful opportunity last year. And it was something that you know, I speak very highly of just, you know, there's, there's just such a passion for every single person you have a kind of conversation with there. It's unreal. And everybody wants to help like everybody. It doesn't matter if you're a first year, second year, a practicing clinician, it's, it's crazy. Um, and, you know, you could just, it's just, it's just unreal. And I guess that's why I have such a passion for, you know, expanding that experience to others. Um, so, you know, maybe hosting like statewide and national, not national, regional conferences that allow people that might not have those financial resources to kind of develop those connections and, um, and you know, connective opportunities with other PTs. That's about it. Great. Thank you, Corey. Next up, we have Hannah. Okay, so um, I'm really big on 
grassroots level is how we're going to advance this profession. So I think everyone has great, huge, big ideas, but to get big, we really have to start sm at a small level. So I really want to work on creating a master list of reaching out to different schools to fi figure out what schools have no form of APTA representation or APTA student liaisons. And then I want to work with that school to try and implement um, and promote a student to an APTA representative role. So that way all schools have an APT a link to the APTA. I've already done this in my own state. I work with Hampton University, which is an HBCU to promote a student to the role of APTA liaison. And then I try to help that student navigate that role. Um, and then a big thing is that I often hear as well, I'm an APTA member or I wanna be an APTA member, but I have no idea how to get involved. Or I hear current students say, I don't know what I'm going to do when I get out into the PT world. So I really want to work on creating educational um, tools and resources um, so that students know how to navigate the APTA as a current student, as well as how to navigate um, the APTA um, as an early professional. So whether it be by promoting um, early professional SIGs or helping implement early professional SIGs, that's where I really want to take um, this role is just kind of creating the link between students and APTA and then further creating and strengthening that link once they get out into the role as physical therapists. Awesome, thank you, Hannah. Next up, we have Ethan. This was me exiting the elevator. Um, yeah, so one of the big things I think, like you guys have mentioned is CSM. I think that's one of the best ways to improve those student relationships and create lasting connections because I know I'm still friends with some of the people I recently met at the CSM and was really able to foster a relationship with them. And the other big thing that we could really hone in on is using our core ambassadors across all 50 states. You know, those are our advocates on the ground. And really, um, these are students that are really wanting to be involved in Sometimes they may not have enough guidance on what to do as a core ambassador. I, I feel like maybe I could have had a little, little bit more guidance as a core ambassador myself. So really um, gathering up our core ambassadors and helping them get aligned on a mission. And I think that would be a great way to foster connections between them. And the last thing is just using reels for social media. Like one thing you could do is like you could get a core ambassador. Hey, I'm the core ambassador of Florida. And my favorite thing about PT is how it helps my pain. Then he'll like, you know, pass the phone or mic or whatever. And then the next person will grab it. Hey, I'm the, P uh, the core ambassador from New York. And my favorite thing about PT is, da -da -da. but yeah, that's just an idea of how we get our people involved. But thanks for listening. Thank you so much, Ethan. Next up, we have Jackie. Okay, so I'm kind of on the same page with Hannah on this. I feel like in order to make a huge change, you have to start at the bottom and kind of start at the smallest point. So I feel like for us to really improve engagement with PT and PTA students, we need to start at the state level, start with the core ambassadors, start with the special interest groups, see what they need, see what they're involved with in terms of engagement. How are they engaging with other PT and PTA schools within their state? And then kind of go from there and encourage both PT and PTA students to get involved with each other, get involved with state chapters, special interest groups, stuff like that, and also correspond with each other. How are they going to interact with each other to improve the engagement? And then just organizing events for students, letting them be heard, I feel like is the biggest thing for students because a lot of the time they feel like they don't have a voice on what their barriers are. So if we're organizing events, even if it's just small things through social media or Zoom or even at CSM or state conferences. It's allowing students to have their voice be heard and we can then realize what they actually need and then fix those barriers throughout the country. So I think starting small and then going larger would be the best option for us. But yeah, thanks. Thank you. Next up we have Brooke. 
All right. So kind of similar to what both Jackie and Hannah said about kind of starting at the grassroots level, regardless, if we're going to expand the student experience, that means expanding accessibility for students to get involved. And one thing that I've realized is interacting with students, both on like at the level of my program and at the state level and at the national level has been that students feel like they can't get involved. One of those might be just purchasing a membership being super expensive. So one way that I'd kind of like to intervene on that is getting in contact. So on the state level, getting in contact with programs, seeing if programs are even willing to include student membership dues in your program tuition dues, either that increasing scholarship opportunities for students, because I think right now a lot of students feel like that's 80 to $100 that I could use for food. I could use for gas. So many other things that are happening and also showing value to students. Um, like everyone said, social media is such an important presence right now, and we can really leverage that to show everything that the APTA is doing, especially for students. Um, right now, the way our website is laid out, it's not bad, but I think there's ways that we can make it more accessible. How can we show students, hey, these are ways that you can get involved. We can show that on Instagram, Twitter, and on the website. Um, additionally, something I'd really like to expand would be mentorship opportunities for students, because for me at least, mentorship is how I'm where I'm at today. That's because other people were helped to show me the way, helped to show me resources and helped to connect me. And that's how I got involved with the APTA. Um, so I was thinking even from a national level, students looking to get involved with leadership, creating some sort of mentorship program or even on the state level. Um, I've mentored a lot of students with getting involved with the APTA and that's how they learned everything that they can do and that it is maybe more accessible than they thought. So I think we need to meet students where they're at and we need to give them the resources to be able to get involved so we can create a really strong professional preference presence in the future. All right, thank you. Next up, we have Carolina. All right, so for developing relationships with SPTs and SPTAs, um, just like we strive for patient-centered care, I really want to strive for student-centered experiences. I think that the best way to develop relationships with others is to really understand what their goals are and I want to find out what other students' interests are and what their why is, so I can help them expand on that and use the resources that the ABTA offers to accomplish this. I'm really big on sharing resources and opportunities with others to help them get where they want to be, and I want others to have the tools that they need to get where they want to be. I also want to maintain, this is going to sound really corny, but an open glass door, which means that I'll always be there for others to reach out to, but I'll also always be transparent. I really think that social media is a great way to accomplish all of this, as a lot of us have already said, but it, it'll also help us maintain the relationships that are built within the profession because this country is so big, the profession is so big, and social media is always there. Hi, thank you so much. And next up, we have Dilana. Hi, everyone. So when thinking about the responsibility of serving and representing SPTs and SPTAs across the nation, which seems like such a big task, I actually think back to something I learned talking with Mackenzie, who is the current vice president of the Student Board of Directors, and that is the importance of having face-to-face -face direct interactions with the student body. So I plan on reaching out regularly to not just each state's core ambassador, but also to individual PT and PTA programs um, with the goal of one, to encourage SPTs and SPTAs to engage with ABTA, but two, and perhaps more importantly, is to really build relationships with our student body and to get a sense of what they actually want and need to succeed, not just in the classroom, not just in clinical experiences, but also as they grow into their professional careers. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much. And last but not least, we have Sienna. So similar to Danielle, I would love to have more events where we can have individual students or representatives from different regions of the country come together and be able to share what they want to see from the APTA, what goals they have, what resources do they wish they had access to, and whether or not we can give them those resources in that meeting or figure out a way to get those resources out. I feel like that would be very beneficial to connect to the students and to see what they want from us. 
And another way that I would love to expand that engagement is through using our social medias more. And I feel like when we have these big positions, it can seem like we're these unicorns that have all this experience or in these board positions, but who are we? So I would love to be able to not really mentor, but have all these different relationships with different students and connect with them and share our experiences. How did we get here? How can you be an advocate for our profession where you're at? You don't have to have these big leadership positions, but what can you do now? Those are my ideas. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Um, so those are all, all of our candidates for both president and director. We have a wonderful, wonderful slate this year. Uh, voting is now open and will close November 30th. So please, please, please get out and cast your votes. Thank you again to these wonderful candidates. And thank you all for coming out tonight and uh, sharing your experiences with, with us and letting us get to know you all a little bit better. Um, yeah, thank you. And uh, please get out and vote. Um, would I possibly be able to pull O'Reilly and take a photo with all of you? To post on social media? Perfect. Hold on. Okay. Oh, wow. Uh, forget my phone's in the picture. All right. Everyone smile. Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs>